exciting time to me. I'm uh, joined here by Melvin Ben, who's the organiser of the Reading and Leeds Festival. Yeah, no, Melvin, thank you for joining us. I guess you could probably guess where I'm going to start this interview. Guns N' Roses, uh, Friday night at Reading. Uh, what happened from your perspective? I mean, just very straightforward, really. I mean, you, you know, we have a curfew here at the festival. Um, the band um, came on for whatever reason an hour late, uh, and I wasn't able to extend the curfew. Um, and so we had to stop. I mean, it's really straightforward stuff, really. Do you know why there was the hour delay? No, no idea at all. Absolutely no idea at all. You know, there's all sorts of rumours. I was saying there was he had a gym set up backstage, all this kind of stuff. No, um, you, you know, I'm sure all the rumours will, you know, will persist. I, I've got no idea. Um, you, you know, the, I mean, every band is under the same, you know, curfew restrictions. It's not about one particular band or another band. Uh, have you seen any of the comments on Twitter from uh, Axel Rose or his bandmates, which are uh, implying that you had a grudge against the band or that people in charge should uh, apologise to the fans? Have you seen any of that? No, I haven't. I've been told it's there, but um, I definitely, I mean, I haven't got a grudge against the band, frankly. Right? Why would I have a grudge against the band? They're one of the greatest bands in the world. Um, and, you know, they're playing one of the greatest festivals in the world. Why on earth would that be? That'd be daft to say that. Two other people like, so, at uh, least tonight, are you confident they'll be on? Well, I, 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 you know, I'm sure I've got no reason to think that they won't, you know, won't play. Of course they'll play. I mean, you know, they've got great fans and, you know, the fans will be there waiting for them. And, um, you know, the only thing I know is that I've got to finish at 11 o'clock. Would you, would you put Guns N' Roses again? Well, I mean, I think they're a great band, so I could see no reason why um, I wouldn't. I'm not sure they'd want to come and play, you know, for me again, but I'm not... I'm, no reason for me not to consider booking them again, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. OK, we covered the low point so far of the weekend. Obviously, one of the great highlights of this festival has to be the return of the Libertines. Took a bit of a gamble because nobody knew what they were going to come back like. What, what was your impression of their performance? I mean, let's not beat about the bush. It was extraordinary. Both, you know, I mean, I, the report from, uh, you know, Leeds on Friday was just fantastic. And then last night here, I mean, you could just tell it was great. You I mean, and the team who built the festival, do you feel vindicated? Because obviously a few people suggested, you know, you know, it's Pete Doherty, will he turn up, that kind of thing. I mean, probably the most reliable performance of the weekend. I think, yeah, I think the model professional really would, uh, are the words that, come, <laughs> that spring to mind, actually. I mean, they've been perfect. In fairness, ever since you know the decision that they took to reform and play Red in the festivals, they have been perfect. And let's not forget, of course, Blink 182 and the RK Fire also headlined. I mean, great to get Blink back and great. I mean, RK Fire you get a bit of a gamble because no one had heard the record, but. You well, feel I mean, fantastic. again, I don't think it was. I mean, certainly for you know, for, for 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 Neil and myself and Dennis, you know, when we were talking about whether you know whether or not to you know to book the Arcade Fire, we had no hesitation. You know, we thought it was right for the festival. That's the you know that it was a, 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 an important step for the festival. Well, would you have you any thoughts next year here at Reading to maybe expand the site, maybe a second outdoor arena? Because no, it's getting very big. No, no, no change really. Uh, very comfortable with the capacity. Very comfortable with the size. Um, probably look at making Leeds a little bit bigger next year. Um, in fact, I will make. Uh, you know, the, well, I have taken the decision to uh, to apply for a bigger license at Leeds. Um, I've changed the position of the main stage in Leeds this year and uh, changed the traffic plan and things are really working good. So very likely that I'll apply that one. But here in Reading, no, I think um, more of the same, but with, 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 with different bands. And just finally, obviously, bear in mind Axel Rose and his Twitter and his lateness and all that kind of thing. Have you enjoyed this year still? Okay, I can't, I can't even imagine why you would ask me such a question. I mean, we are at the greatest festival in the world. How could I not enjoy it? With that in mind, then, any thoughts for next year yet? <laughs> well, of course, we, you know, we're, we're non-stop thinkers, really, in terms of uh, each and every year. Um, unable to give you any sort of real pointers as you would expect, but you know, very confident about you know about where we'll be with the bill next year. So just getting away from the headliners, obviously, uh, it's a massive festival out there. What have been your highlights when you've had a chance to go and watch bands? Um, you know, quite a you know quite a you know quite a sort of varied really. Um, I mean, dizzy. Um, in a way, you could hardly sort of expect dizzy to uh, you know hardly expect dizzy to. Uh, let you down, but the way that he performed that crowd, you know, just incredible, absolutely incredible. The place was heaving, absolutely heaving.